Hi! In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the powerful debugging features in Pack Control. One of the advantages of a flowchart language like Pack Control is that the graphical nature lends itself to powerful debugging tools. To view these tools, we need to go into debug mode, so I'll click this button here. For this screencast, I'll be using the Snap Pack Learning Center as my hardware. Now that my control program, or strategy, has been downloaded to the Learning Center, I can click Run to start the strategy. At this point, I might like to take a look at the control information. I'll click on the Snap Pack, which is the Snap Pack R1 hardware running the strategy. In this Inspect dialog, I can view all sorts of useful information, such as the firmware version and the amount of memory available. If there were any errors, I could click the link next to Message Queue for more information. I can enable Auto Run Mode and verify that a copy of my code has been stored to Flash on the Snap Pack. You can also make sure there's an archive of your strategy on the controller itself, in case you ever want to upload that strategy from the controller, or if you want to make sure you have the exact strategy currently running on the controller before making revisions to it. Let's go ahead and close this window. Now let's take a closer look at one of the flowcharts. The status bar at the bottom of the chart tells us the chart is running. To visualize a process, I'll put it in auto step mode by clicking on this button here. Normally, the chart logic runs much faster, but in auto step mode, Pack Control slows down the process so you can see each block being highlighted and you can follow the logic. For example, it's easy to see when the tank level becomes too high. This visual method of debugging makes it easy to spot logic flaws. You can also use a breakpoint to stop the logic at any location. Let's say that the pump isn't turning on when it should. I'll place a breakpoint to stop the logic right before the pump should turn on. Pack Control will pause right before executing the commands in that block. At this point, I have several choices. I will click on the Step Over button. Pack Control will execute all of the commands in the block and move on to the next block. Each time I click on the Step Over button, I advance to the next block. Or I can click the Step Into button. This button lets me run commands one at a time. Each time I click the button, it executes a command. The Step Into button is especially useful for debugging OptoScript as well as stepping into subroutines. Now I'll remove the breakpoint and click the Auto Step button to go back into Auto Step mode. If I want to pause the chart at any point, I can click the Pause button. To resume regular chart execution, I can click the Pause button again. Because the Snap Pack can multitask, other charts can be running, even if one chart is stopped or paused. If I click on the Charts folder here in the Strategy tree, I can see the status of all charts. I'll select a chart and change the status to running and click apply. In debug mode, it's easy to change the value of a variable. Simply double click the variable name, expand the window, type in a new value and click apply. Now let's look at the IO. I'll click on the IO unit name in the strategy tree and I see the status of all the points. These values are continually scanned and updated. For example, if I turn on a switch, I can see it turn on. If I let go, I can see it turn off. If I rotate a potentiometer, I can see that update as well. You probably noticed there are two columns of values. The XVAL, which stands for external value, is the value of the hardware, the I.O., or inputs and outputs. IVAL stands for internal value. This is the software value in the control engine. Having these separate values is useful for software simulation and debugging, and also for forcing outputs. Speaking of which, let me show you how to do that. First, I'll double-click on a digital output point and expand the window. Because I want to force an output on the I.O. unit, I'll change the XVAL to ON and click Apply. Now the LED is on. I'll switch it to OFF and click Apply, and I've turned off the point. If I want to simulate an input, I can use the iVal. 
As I mentioned, this is useful for debugging because you could test values that you wouldn't or couldn't want to generate in your application. I'll select the tank level input, expand the point, and disable communications to the point. This removes the link between the hardware and the software. The XVAL still changes as I turn the potentiometer, but the IVAL is not updated because the point is disabled. Now I can change the IVAL to 9800 and click Apply. My strategy thinks the tank level is too high and turns on the drain and turns off the pump. As you can see, that's much easier than actually filling up the tank. I'll re-enable the point and close these I.O. windows. Let's look at one last feature. What if you wanted to look at a few variables and I.O. points at the same time? You could open up a window for each one, but a better way is to open up a watch window. I'll go to the watch menu and select a window that I already created. You'll see I've got analog and digital points as well as float variables. To add another tag, I find it in my strategy tree. Then I just click, drag, and drop it into my watch window. To move a tag up and down in the list or delete it, just right click on it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.